Did you know that with over 1 lakh cases of oral cavity cancer every year, India has the highest number of oral cancer cases in the world. For men, it is the topmost type of cancer and for women, the third most common type of cancer. But the good news is with early detection and proper treatment, the rate of treating this oral cavity cancer is also significantly high. My name is Renuka. Today we have with us Dr. Ruvi Dabur, a senior oral surgeon at Clove Dental, to share with us what are the symptoms, what are the causes, what are the signs to look for, how to identify oral cavity cancer, how to treat it, and how to really get rid of this problem. Welcome, Dr. Dava. Thank, Thank you so for much. taking the time out and talking to us today. It's a pleasure and uh, this topic actually needs a lot of attention. So thank you for having me here. So let's get to the beginning of this oral cancer. What are the symptoms to watch out and what is the pre-cancer stage like? Okay. So basically oral cancer often begins as a small sore or an ulcer in the mouth or a lump or thickening in the mouth or the oral tissues. It can also start as a red or white patch. Okay, so we've understood how it begins. But what happens next? How does it grow if unscreened? And what are the stages? So basically, oral cancer is broadly, you know, divided into four stages mm -hmm. from stage one to four. As the number of the stage increases, that means the cancer has become more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Stage one cancers are basically small lesions which are limited to a small part of the mouth and the tumor is less than two centimeters in size. Okay. The, then comes the stage two. Stage two tumors are between, again, they are small. They are between two to four centimeters in size and they also haven't spread to any other parts. They are still limited to the mouth and the, okay. uh, in the mouth itself. Then comes the stage three. Now, stage three also, the tumor itself is, yes, limited to the part of the mouth where it started. It has gone beyond the size of four centimeters in stage 3A, but it hasn't spread to any of the lymph nodes. Right. In stage 3B, the tumor may be of any size, but it has also spread to the lymph nodes on the neck of the same side of the tumor. Understood. The stage 4 is the final and the most aggressive stage of oral cancer. And this is the stage wherein, you know, the most aggressive forms of the same stage are also considered almost untreatable. So it's further divided into three stages. Stage 4A is when the cancer has become larger, has spread to the underlying or the surrounding structures and has also involved one or more uh, lymph nodes on the same side of the uh, primary lesion. Right. Then stage 4 means the cancer has become even bigger, has also spread to the opposite side of the primary lesion. That is the lymph nodes are on both sides of the neck. Then stage 4C, which is the most aggressive form, is when the cancer has spread to distant lymph nodes, which is which means that not just the neck, but to lymph nodes in the liver, the lung. So it has metastasized to different parts of the body. Stage 4C is basically when we mostly can only provide palliative care to the patient when the cancer is mostly regarded as untreatable. Care is uh, aimed at improving the quality of life of the patient and focusing only on the, you know, improving the pain or the symptoms of the patient. Okay, so once the stage has been diagnosed, what are the various types of treatments for each stage? So yes, the treatment of course depends on the staging of the cancer or the tumor. In stage 1, where the tumor is a small size, it's limited to one area. So surgery is the primary form of treatment, which at times may be followed by radiation therapy to target the remaining cancer cells in the mouth. Right. When we go on to stage 2, surgery again, which of course is more aggressive since the size of the tumor has increased and it will most commonly, you know, more commonly be uh, added on with radiotherapy. Right. As we move on to stage 3, wherein the tumor has spread to the surrounding lymph nodes, surgery to address the primary tumor and surgery to do the neck dissection, basically to remove the lymph nodes in the neck, plus radiotherapy and also chemotherapy gets added to the treatment. Okay. 
as we move on to stage 4 okay now the same approach will actually also be followed for stage 4 a and b kind of tumors mm -hmm. wherein yes the uh, lymph nodes are involved but it's still limited to the nearby lymph nodes as we move on to stage 4 c wherein the distant metastasis is there the treatment usually focuses on like we discussed palliative, palliative care, care to uh, focus on the symptoms or the pain of the patient it can also again include chemotherapy it, in, it can include targeted therapy you know analgesics so uh, treatments like that basically to improve the quality of life of the patient thank you that was very informative now we know that the Early screening, regular checkups is the way to find out cancer, um, oral cavity cancer and treat it. But what is the screening process like? How do you find out early that there is cancer? Can you do the screening at home? Do you have to do, go to a clinic? How does one go about? See, of course, the uh, screening starts at home. So, self-screening is a simple yet effective method because, you know, our oral cavity is something we can actually look at in the mirror. So, what we can do uh, in self-screening is just stand in front of the mirror, see for any, you know, symptoms that we discussed about, any lumps or any sores or any ulcers, especially that at times there could be ulcers which are there present in the mouth and they still do not hurt. Mm -hmm. So, these things can only be, you know, seen when we look uh, at ourselves in the mirror. So, we can look for such things. We can look for any kind of a red or white patch that's developed into the mouth. Uh, if we find any of these in our oral cavity on the tongue, the mucosa, that is the skin of the cheek or the lips or the floor of the mouth, these should be brought to attention to a medical professional. This is what we do at home. Now, uh, when it comes to a professional thorough, you know, screening, that of course involves the dentist or, uh, you know, whoever is checking you to look at your entire mouth, all of these areas of the mouth, look for any of these symptoms. Mm -hmm. They also check for lymph nodes that basically they see and then they feel for any kind of lump in the mouth or in the neck. Then if there is anything suspicious, then we can go ahead with using dyes which obviously give us a more definite picture and that led, leads us to a conclusion whether we should do a biopsy. Now, biopsy is actually the gold standard for diagnosis of oral cancer. So, if there is any doubt where we think a lesion or a spot or a red or white lesion in the mouth could be cancer, a biopsy should be done. Well, thank you, doctor. That was very informative. So, we've learned that um, what are the different types, uh, what are the stages of cancer and, and the big learning that we can do self-screening at home to start with and do that regularly. And if you miss it, your dentist will find it. And that is why it is very important that you must visit your dentist regularly. Talk to them about anything that you are in doubt of. Now, doctor, tell us, what are the causes of cancer and how could we have prevented it could we have pre prevented it oh yes in the first place yeah. please see that actually is uh, what makes oral cancer you know most interesting oral cancer can actually be prevented in most cases because the causes of oral cancer are all man-made okay. so uh, smoking basically tobacco consumption it could be smoking or you know chewable tobacco excessive alcohol consumption then uh Certain viruses like human papillo, certain strains of human papilloma virus, which is most commonly known as HPV virus. Then sun exposure, oral basically causing lip cancer, prolonged sun exposure. So these are all the basic causes which actually lead to oral cancer development. Uh, tobacco, which is in uh, your smoke, uh, cigarettes or chewable tobacco, basically releases carcinogens into the mouth which affect the cells of our oral cavity, the tissues of the oral cavity. This along with alcohol consumption actually, you know, uh, increases the risk of oral cancer multifold. Mm. Human papilloma virus, which is basically HPV virus that can be contracted, the high strains of that can be contracted through direct skin to skin contact, especially in, uh, you know, unprotected sex or certain oral sexual practices. So the also, uh, like I said, prolonged sun exposure that is also a leading cause of oral cancer now how can these be prevented of course we know we shouldn't smoke or you know our alcohol 
uh, consumption should be limited. So that is the basic thing that we can do to prevent ourselves from oral cancer. Then uh, follow safe sexual practices, get vaccinated for HPV, human papilloma virus vaccination should be taken by whoever and whenever mm -hmm. you can. Then manage stress. Stress can also be a predisposing oh. factor to oral cancer. Yes. Interesting. Also have a healthy diet, a diet rich in fruits and vegetables, which are rich in antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Then uh, use sunscreens, not just for, you know, better skin, skin. <laughs> not just for better skin, but to protect ourselves, use lip balms or sunscreens with the higher SPFs to protect ourselves from the uh, damaging effects of prolonged sun exposure. Okay. Then, of, like we have mentioned before, regular screening at home, especially if you think you are exposed to one of these factors and your regular visits to your dental practitioner for them to do a thorough regular screening. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruby. Thank you. Thank you. So your much. gateway to better good health is your oral cavity. Please take care of it. Talk to your dentist.